Tally-ho, Jules Guides here, in which I wander around London and tell you fascinating facts which you may or may not have heard, and uh, in which I probably make a few mistakes as well, but I'm sure you're going to point them out to me. Today we're doing Jules Guy's rock and roll tour of Soho's music scene, which is why we've started in Denmark Street. It's a pity that all the stuff's covered up by scaffolding. They're trying to knock all these houses down. However, some of them are listed buildings, so they're failing. There's been an uproar from all the people here because there's such a rich history of music here. And it all started actually back in 1911 when uh, a fella called Lawrence Wright, he started the first music publishing company down here. He was the guy who started up Melody Maker as well. I think uh, some years after that, NME, the New Musical Express, that started up down here at number five. I think it was in NME that my sister's band, in which I sang, we actually achieved notoriety, or was it in sounds? We were voted the fifth worst band name in the... Uh... <laughs> It was uh, spandex nappy rash. <laughs> we also toyed with the idea of being called My Tampax Smells of Pilchard and Zimbabwe Cheesecake. Those names are now available if you want to use those for your own band. <laughs> but, uh, and, you, and you could maybe reach higher in the list of bad names. I kissed your man. Towards the 1960s, it became more fashionable to write and record your own song. So a lot of recording studios started up, like this one, Regent's Studios, and this one's really famous. This is where Black Sabbath did, recorded their first two albums. The Rolling Stones recorded their first album there, and David Bowie did some early uh, demos there with The Lower Third, which he recruited down there at the Jaconda. Before Tom Jones was famous, they wrote a song which was originally intended for Sandy Shaw, and they got hold of this unknown singer called Tom Jones, and they thought, oh, well, he's got quite a good voice, let's get him to do the demo. And, and they came down here to record this song called It's Not Unusual, which happens to be my favourite character karaoke song. Well, after Joe Dolce, shut up your face. Oh, shut up your face. <laughs> but anyway, they came down here and they said, oh, well, we don't have a keyboard player. So they went down to La Giaconda again and they said, can anyone play keyboards? And this bloke called Reg said, yeah, I, I can play. And he came down here and he laid down the keyboard track. You go on YouTube and you listen to the original demo version and it's Reg Dwight playing, otherwise known as Elton John, of course, who, by the way, used to work as a sort of making the tea as a kind of office clerk at number 20, which I think hard to tell with all these catfolding everywhere, but I think it was one Joe Guitars. That is where Bernie Taupin, apparently he was waiting for him one morning, sitting on the roof in 1965, and he just wrote, I sat on a roof and kicked off the mask. Might have been Elton John's first ever hit, that, I think. So the Kinks recorded a demo for You Really Got Me. Some people say that was the first ever heavy metal song. Ray Davis's brother, his girlfriend, said the first version she listened to didn't make her want to take her knickers off. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he slashed the speaker cone and it gave it that really raw kind of heavy metal sound. And uh, that was done in one of these studios down here, which uh, I expect no longer exists. I kissed him, it's true. We could spend an hour in this street alone just talking about all the different stuff that, that happened here. So I think this is the one where the Sex Pistols lived, isn't it? There's another building out the back. Paul Cook and Steve Jones, the guitarist. I think they lived in there and uh, Johnny Rotten did graffiti and stuff in there, like caricatures of Sid Vicious. And you can still see them, they're still in there, but I don't think we're allowed in. Down here, the world famous Jaconda. This is where you came to hire musicians. That's one of the only remnants left, this little bit of mosaic on the wall changed quite a bit now but it's still nice to be in the same place where david bowie hung out with uh, mark boland don't you think this building here is where brian epstein the manager of the beatles was supposed to meet a publisher here and he, he got stood up the guy didn't show up so he knocked on dick james's door and he said what about this band the beatles and he went yeah yeah all right so he signed them and made an absolute fortune and then sold the rights to michael jackson i think didn't he I think so. And one day, Lennon and McCartney, and they were walking down the street here, and the Rolling Stones were going past in a taxi. So they got into the taxi, and they said to the Beatles, listen, you haven't got any songs we can do. This must have been around 1962 or something. And the Beatles go, yeah, we got one that we were writing for Ringo Starr. It's called I Wanna Be Your Man. And they jumped in the cab, went down to the recording studio, and the Beatles just finished it off. And it became one of the Rolling Stones' first hits. I Now, 
look, if I make any mistakes, or if you disagree... <laughs> please comment please, and yeah. slap him around a little. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Feel free to make to, to let me know. But also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well. So behind me is Foyle's, London's best bookshop, in my opinion. It used to be the St Martin's School of Art. She came from Greece, she had a thirst for knowledge. She studied art at St Martin's College, that's where I... <laughs> All right, I wish I could get your face. <laughs> Common people, no it's called. Common people. Anyway, so they used to do gigs in here. And um, they said the first ever Sex Pistols gig was inside this building. I think this bit up here used to be the stage. And that night they supported a band called Bazooka Joes, and that was Adam Ant's band. It was him. I'm only joking. This is Old Compton Street, gay capital of London, I suppose. And this used to be like the, the Italian ghetto, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, from the 1860s, Italians started moving into here, and then after the First World War, there were even more. Frith Street, around the corner, you must know Bar Italia. I do not go to eat or drink in Italian places in London. They suck and I get angry. <laughs> <laughs> Got this original uh, Ganja coffee machine in there, you know that? I think they opened in 1949 and it's been there ever since, but I just wanted to point this out. Well, actually, just look over the road, right, since we're talking about music, this is Ronnie Scott. That's the last place Jimi Hendrix performed. And he went back and he died that night. But Bar Italia, the reason I find it quite amusing is upstairs in 1926. This is where, do you know John Logie Baird, the Scotsman, who he invented the cathode ray tube TV or something. I'm sure someone will point it out. He had been testing out on a, I don't know, a balloon or something in his house. So he came down and there was this little kid going past. I think he was like a 15-year-old boy um, called William Paynton or Tainton or something. And he said, oh, mate, can I, can, do you want to come upstairs and I'll, I'll give you 10 quid and I, I can put you on, onto my TV? And so the kid went upstairs and then has a dubious honour of having been the first person ever to have been broadcast on television. It's probably inadvisable, just side note, if you're in Soho these days, don't give someone £10, especially a 15-year-old boy, to come into your house and film them. It's, it's not a good idea. <laughs> I'm not talking from experience, but... <laughs> This is where I come to buy my gimp outfits and uh, crutchless panties, you know. <laughs> Whatever your, is your bag, baby. <laughs> I just find it interesting, the kind of people who come out of there, you know. You wouldn't think it, would you? you know? This is where I buy my coffee, by the way. Very highly recommended. Then you went home and cried A grown man with a tear in his eye But who is for life, his lover or his wife? Apparently that Compton's, that pub, that's where Cliff Richard got his name, Cliff Richard. Because he, he, originally it was called Harry Webb. And the place next door, which is now a fish and chip shop, used to be a really famous bar called The Two Eyes. And in the 1950s, it was quite a famous place to go and be discovered. Cliff Richard was discovered here, and there was a famous singer called Tommy Steele. I don't know anything about him, but anyway, he famously used to play there quite a bit. Bright lights, Soho, Wardour Street. You hope you make friends with the guys that you meet. Somebody shows you round. This used to be the Intrepid Fox. Kind of biker, goth place to hang out. It's now Byron Burgers, like everything else. Ah, oh, Merde Street. Merde. Not as in Merde yeah. <laughs> in French. This used to be the Batcave, the famous goth nightclub where Robert Smith from The Cure used to hang out, Susie Sue, Nick Cave, as in And the Bad Seeds. When goth culture became big, it, it, I think it was already quite big up north, um, but then it first started up in London, down in one of these places. Might have been this door here, or it could be this one here. And anyway, like so many places around here, it's a swanky nightclub bar thing now. Which door? Oh, do you know which one used to be the Batcave? The Batcave. Oh, OK. He doesn't know, you see. So it's dying out. It's all dying out. Oh, by the way, opposite, just up there on the wall, there's another one of uh, Rick Buckley's famous Noses of Soho. If you've seen my film about the one on Admiralty Arch, these noses are all over Soho. I think it's modelled on his own nose. He was annoyed about the fact that there were so many CCTV cameras in London, so he thought that everyone was a nosy parker. So he, uh, as an art installation, he's put up a whole bunch of these noses, and if you find them all, it means you're going to get great prosperity, apparently. 1732, you see? This is a lovely old street. 
those round things, I suppose, are the tie rods to hold the building together. <laughs> If you've got a metal bar going through the house like that to, to add structure to hold it up and then you've got this these metal circles on either side on the outside to stop the, the walls buckling outwards I think that's what it is anyway It just looks like an ordinary boring building these days, but that was one of the most famous live music venues in England. That was, that was the Marquee Club. From about 1964 to about 1988, anyone who was anybody played there. Everybody except for the Beatles. Although they did go there. I think they were at the famous gig where Jimi Hendrix set his guitar on fire. The first ever live Rolling Stones gig was here in 1962. David Bowie and the Manish Boys played there in 1964. Queen even played there in the early days. The Damned, Joy Division, Dire Straits, The Police, Jimmy Polanski, Johnny Bellotti, even Johnny Two Times. They called him Johnny Two Times because he said everything twice. I'm gonna go to the bar, get a drink, get a drink. If you wanted to know who was playing at any given night there at the Marquee, you'd go to the Ship Pub over here. I did used to go to Marquee, yeah. Um, did you see that? I saw The Cure there uh, as a three-piece years ago. Adam and the Ants, fantastic. Yeah. Uh, Generation X there was fantastic. Sweat was dripping down the walls, you know, it was, it was brilliant, it was atmosphere. Soho Square. There's a couple of houses in, along the square on that side over there, which are actually from the 17th century, from the original time when this was built for the Earl of Monmouth. In fact, Soho doesn't mean south of Houston like it does in New York. It actually used to be the hunting cry of the Earl of Monmouth, I think it was. He was the oldest illegitimate son of King Charles II. King Charles II had many illegitimate sons, but apparently when he went hunting, he'd go, so ho! And that's where we get the word from. And uh, the only buildings along here which still survive from his time are uh, a couple over there. But uh, MPL over here, this is the company which is in charge of the business holdings of Paul McCartney. And sometimes if the blinds are open, you can see his gold discs and stuff on the wall. It's quite nice. It's a very important street down here. Yeah, we sure. Watch all your YouTube videos. Fans, oh. actual fans. Thank you. We saw you. We're like, oh my gosh, we're much taller than the, in your videos. Don't get oh. killed. Come over it. This place here, Trident Records Studios, and that is where David Bowie recorded Hunky Dory and the Rise and Fall of Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars. How can you not be <laughs> impressed? When you listen to that um, David Bowie album and he's, he's going, it's Andy Warhol and it's on say one and there's all the clapping and stuff in the background. It's just, it's just nice to be able to locate where he was when he was doing that and there's a phone ringing and stuff. It's amazing. Fans, see? Queen recorded some of Bohemian Rhapsody here as well. Hey Jude by the Beatles, Carolina in my mind, James Taylor, Elton John, Rocketman. How do I know all this? Because I'm reading it off the <laughs> sign here. See this record shop here? I think this area here is, uh, is actually the greatest concentration of record shops in London. So you do still get some record shops in London. Who buys records? I buy records. Records are great. You get them at the Wrecker Stowe. Anyway, this particular record store called Sounds of the Universe used to be called the Bricklayer's Arms. In 1962, Brian Jones put an advert that was looking for a guitarist and a singer and what have you. And Keith Richards showed up here uh, with Mick Jagger and also I think Bill Wyman came to the audition. And when they walked down, they were the Rolling Stones. This is where the Rolling Stones was formed. And around the corner is uh, Berwick Street, which is actually the first place where tomatoes were ever sold in Great Britain. They were imported from South Africa. Hard to believe. 1880 or something. Used to be a big fruit and veg market down here. Now they've changed it all and you can get all your Chinese takeaway, pizza, curry, goodness knows what, street food. It's the latest cool thing, apparently. If you put street food after something, then apparently it becomes really cool. So you can't just say Vietnamese food. You have to say Vietnamese street food, then everyone will flock and buy it. And that's the place to go and get it. 
This is where they took the photo for the front cover of What's the Story Morning Glory by Oasis. So incidentally, it's also where my friend comes to have her bikini waxing. You know who you are. You know, <laughs> that one down there. They finally repositioned the Jon Snow cholera pump. I made a video about this before. Jon Snow was the, the guy who discovered that cholera was waterborne. My favourite story is that there was this cholera epidemic and he couldn't understand why these builders in the area weren't getting unwell. Everyone else was getting cholera, but these guys never got unwell. And it turned out that all they ever did was drink beer in this pub and they never drank any water from the cholera pump. And he removed the handle and uh, Bob's your uncle realised that it wasn't spread by breath after all. It was actually waterborne. That's why it's got no handle on it. Oh, this is uh, Carnaby Street. You know the Kinks song, um, dedicated follower fashion? Everywhere the Carnabetian army marches on, each one a dedicated follower of fashion. You know that song? Dedicated follower of fashion. So he talks about the Carnabetian army, which I assume means people who hang out in Carnaby Street, because Carnaby Street in the 60s was really the centre of fashion. I think it was because Mary Quant invented the miniskirt down here. I think someone in America also claims to have invented that. These days, it's just pretty mainstream. If you want a London-related souvenir, these guys on Carnaby Street have lots of it. London artists or designers and stuff like that. Except they don't have anything by me in there. But uh, who knows, one day they will stop Jules Guide's memorabilia. I think this is Noel or Liam Gallagher's shop. Based on your oh, you watched the Harry Potter video? Yeah, thank you very much. See, I'm, I am fame at last. You fame are famous. Thanks very Thanks much. Thanks for girls from Poland, then. Have a great day. See you. See you in the next video. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what their children will make of some of the more sex-related remarks in it, but anyway. Now, if you've seen my videos before, you will have seen me come down and talk about David Bowie, but this is where the front cover from the album Ziggy Stardust and Spiders from Mars was photographed. All these buildings around here used to be photographers' studios. And it was January 1972 and it was freezing cold. They'd done all their indoor shots and then the photographer said, oh, let's just do one more outside. Um, and the, most of the band just said, no, no, we're not, we're not doing it. But uh, David Bowie went, no, no, all right, I'll come outside. So he just froze his nuts off in a, in a jumpsuit which was made out of fabric, bought from Regent Street around the corner. He stood here. You know what, since I've already done this, I'm sacking Alessandra now, and I'm going to quickly cut to my earlier version of this video. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Just like that. <laughs> Ziggy played guitar. Oh, I, I just feel like such an idiot, but it's one of the most legendary albums ever made. It's a bit of a pity that you can't take the exact shot now because of all this stuff around here. I know, it was like facing that way. It doesn't quite look the same now. And just around the corner here is where the back of the album cover is shot, the famous telephone box. Let's hope it doesn't smell of piss. And not even any graffiti. The original photo was taken in black and white. If you look at it, you can see that he's coloured it afterwards. That's why it has that strange look to it. I think it was voted in one of these stupid polls as the 20th best album of all time. What are your top five favourite albums? Come on, Transformer by Lou Reed, Ziggy Stardust and Spiders from Mars, that's got to be in the top five. The soundtrack to Mary Poppins. And surely the Little Lost Lou album, which you've been listening to in this video, available online now. Actually, I'd probably put a Steve Harley and Cockney Rebel album in there as well. I know, they're obscure, I'm sorry. If you've seen my Mayfair video, you will know the last place on my amazing rock and roll tour of Soho is uh, here in Savile Row. Because that building over there used to be Apple Records or something. And that was the famous place where the Beatles did their final live performance. It's just on the roof up there. It was in 1969 and all the locals complained. I think they performed there for like 42 minutes before the police came and closed them down. I like Savile Row because you do know that Savile Row um, is where they get the Japanese word for a suit. <laughs> because, yeah, because the Japanese ambassador was here in the 1800s and he went to ha came down here to have his suit made and he went back to Japan and all his friends said, excuse me, well, what's that amazing thing you're wearing? Where did you get that from? And he, he said, oh, I got it from Sebiro. And if you say Savile Row in a Japanese accent, it sounds like Sebiro. 
and that's why the word for a suit in Japanese is a sebiro. You can check. I'm not making it up. Or am I? <laughs> Cheers! Well, thanks for watching. Apparently, all the, all the people who used to perform at the Marquee used to drink in this pub. Uh, Hendrix, Bowie, the barman was just telling me. And, um, and that guy was just talking to it here, the punk. He was in uh, one of the videos for Billy Idol. <laughs> yeah, or was it Generation X? I forgot, now he's going to kill me. Never mind. So, I uh, hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy the video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And uh, if you're interested in finding out more about me, you can head over to JulesGuides.com, um, where you can even get into contact with me if you want a private guided walk around London somewhere. Um, and you can even be a Patreon, whatever the hell that is, uh, or donate to the cause on PayPal. I must also say this film is for my brother Terence, who is a real rock and roller and a bit of a hellraiser. Here's to you, Terence. Cheers! Do you this bad dream? Or do you just make sure that Johnny's grave is swept clean?